Hi everyone, it's Michelle and today I am doing a flip through of a journal that I have made. Um, I'm going to start out by explaining the name of the book. The book is actually called Love Trumps All and my husband named it because it's huge as Donald Trump likes to say. Um, and so I've actually kept the name that he gave it. And this thing is huge. You'll see it's got over a two inch spine. Um, I believe it's like two and a quarter inches. It has close to 200 pages. It's uh, 192 pages. And it is huge. It has six signatures. So this thing is huge. Um, this was actually based on a Nick the Booksmith class, Adventures in Booksmithing, that I took. This was a lot of fun. I have to say, I really, really loved her class. And it was all about the embossing and making the ridges on the spine and all of that. Uh, so it was really a lot of fun. But I learned a couple of life lessons and I will get philosophical at the end and share some of those life lessons with you. Let's get into the book. So this is an embossed cover. And I did the five ridges on the spine. Uh, and in the back, I tried to do a little flower. I don't know if you can see that right there. But I tried to do this little flower, which is part of these flowers that are on this side. So it didn't turn out fabulously, but I think it worked. There is a ton of stitching in this. There is a ton of ephemera. I decided that if I was going to do this book, I was going to go big or go home. There is lace. So every signature has its own lace. I put on every single lace piece a dangle of some kind. And I'll go through each of those as we go through all of the book. Um, and there's stuff sticking out everywhere. So this was definitely a go big or go home. And it's just held closed with some coffee stained seam binding. And in the front, oh, and I used a Prima paper pad for most of this book. And it is this one by Prima. And it's Tales of You and Me. So I went completely with a love story and a love theme for this book and I'll just kind of let you see some of these these papers I fell in love with this it's very vintage looking it's got lots of roses and so I stuck with that so this is just one of the pages out of it and the front this is one of the there's a whole page of ephemera that comes with it so I have I cut this out and then I made tags this is using, oops, I need to glue that corner down. Anyway, this is using the Tim Holtz collage paper, which is why it's a little bit see-through and book pages and lace. And that just tucks in there. And then How Do I Love Thee? This is actually also Nick the Booksmith, and it is a, um, she has a, a quotes page that you can get. And this is a little Tim Holtz dangle. It just has a little rose in it and some bling, of course I love bling, and there's lace on the first page of it. And each signature has its own cover. I did a ton of stamping in this, and I used again another Prima stamp set, um, a book pocket. This is actually an image that I got off of Pinterest, and what I will do is post below the link to the Pinterest board that has all of these things pinned and you can go take a look at all of that. This is just a blank um, piece of uh, three by five index card, but it's a blank one, it doesn't have the lines. This is stained with avocado. So yes, everybody thinks avocado will dye things green. It actually dyes things pink. So I have a lot of avocado dyed paper in here. I have some bumblebees stamped here and a key stamped here. And what I used for my stamping uh, to stamp with are actually the Tim Holtz, uh, de the, uh, what are these things called? The di uh, distress oxides, so that it didn't bleed through. One of the problems with coffee dyed paper is stuff tends to bleed through. I have some Edith Holden. I decorated some glassine bags. This was leftover paper and I made tickets out of it. I made these little flowers. I will do a tutorial on how to do those flowers. 
I actually chose the dictionary page. This talks about romanticism, and I believe somewhere in here is about roses. This is some genuine French ephemera that I picked up from Monahan's Papers, who I will also include her link below. And again, more stamping, tons and tons of stamping. This is the first collage that I did in it. And I have three collages in this book and they kind of tell a story of uh, a romance. And so I imagine this part, and this all came out of a book called The Singing Tree. And this was, uh, I imagine this to be the first meeting. You can see the parents are maybe not so happy about her meeting this young man. Um, and I did more of the paper flowers and lace and again that collage paper from Tim Holtz. This again is from Nick the Booksmith and it talks about journey. More stamping. This is a side tuck that I created using the leftover one inch strips from cutting the pages down to fit in this book journal. Um, I do have a couple of blank pages, but not many. Again, I made sewed some pockets. That is, again, the ephemera from the paper pack. More of that. This is also a Nick the Booksmith. This is actually a love note that I printed out and just kind of paper clipped it using a Tim Holtz clip right here. Uh, Edith Holden, more stamping, and that's the end of the first signature. Now the second signature I put, this is a Tim Holtz one that says, love. I don't know if you can see that, but it says love on it. And like I said, each signature has its own little dangle on it. And again, more ephemera from the paper pack. This is also French, antique French music from Monaghan's Papers. This is um, a printout page from Romeo and Juliet. And I printed this out actually again from a Nick the Booksmith. Uh, these are all in her Etsy shop, so I will go ahead and post below her Etsy shop links. So you've seen some of this before, so I will just continue going. Um, I tried to do a nice mix of different kinds of papers. This is a flip out, so it's also a pocket. And again, I got this off of uh, Pinterest, I'm, and so you just check below to find out and, and look for that. And this is some Tim Holtz washi, and this flips out so you can actually write on both sides of this paper. Um, this is that Tim Holtz die cut, and then instead of putting the plate that goes on it, this is coffee dyed tissue paper that I have some stamps that I can make whatever word I want on it. More of those flowers, and then there's some tickets and some of these tucked in here. You'll see that again. More stamping, more book pages. This is a guest check that I made. This is, I wanna say that's Nick the book, book, Booksmith. It is, this was actually free. It's on her Flickr page. Uh, so I've got several things from that. It was a, uh, like a mail, a pen pal thing. And this is some rose paper from something else that I had, and you have lace, and then I did some stamping on it. And that tucks in here, and the backs of these are all tuck spots as well. This is kind of tough to get in there because of that lace. And then we're to the back of the second signature. This is the third signature, and this has one of my handmade bead dangles, and there is a tutorial on how I make these. And every single one of these are clipped on with a claw clip so that they can come off. They're not permanently affixed. So you could take it off, but I will post the link to that below. So that I'm now up to three links I will post below. That will include this, um, how to make these bead dangles. And of course, tons of coffee dyed paper, more stamping. Um, this again is a receipt. This is a belly band. This is a very large, um, index card and again just I simply did um, avocado dyeing on it and this is another Prima die cut piece that I had more Edith Holden I don't think you can ever have too many Edith Holden another glassine bag with a guest check in it 
the center of the signature. This is the second of the um, collages that I did. And this is the wedding scene from that book. And it's just got some fabric. You may recognize this from my Nick the Booksmith challenge. I used that in, in that book. And more of the flowers. And then this is a strip where I cut out all the parts for the flowers. Uh, I just love how that looks. And it says, dance as if no one is watching. Again, there's a book page behind it. And this is just pink tissue paper that I had and some ribbon. Um, another Tim Holtz uh, die cut with ephemera in it. And Edith Holden and more of that. Another tag that I made with lace and the Tim Holtz... Um, collage paper. I love that stuff. And now we're on to the, what are we on to? The fourth signature. And this one has a key. This is just a, a little brass key. I, I've got a whole bunch of these from a bunch of different places. Um, I just love keys. So, um, so this is the next one. And again, coffee dyed paper. This is a vintage ephemera, again, from Monahan's paper. I tried to do some stamping on this uh, tissue paper, this coffee dyed tissue paper. Eh, it kind of turned out okay, but it's everything is light enough that you could technically write over it. Um, I printed out, these are, uh, I wanna say coin bags. Uh, and again, got it off of uh, Pinterest. And then this is the ephemera from the, the pe paper pack. Another book page from Nick the Booksmith. And more of this paper. This, again, is a printout. I'm not quite sure where I got this from. And that just tucks right in there. Another Tim Holtz. I love doing this, the bumblebees and just stamped a bunch of them up there and I did that with swallows as well. Little teapot, which is fun, and another tag. Fourth signature, this one has a little heart on it. So I put just a little heart dangle there and lace along the edge. This has a guest check again in the front more coffee dyed paper and stamping. I love the sound of coffee dyed paper. My husband says, your paper is really loud. Yes, yes it is, and I like it that way. Um, another printout that I got from off of Pinterest. I loved the pink on this, um, and this is for artificial flowers. Yes, six years of French, and now I can dream in it, but I can't tell you what I dreamt about. <laughs> Another Edith Holden page for the center of this signature. Another glassine bag with a tag. I love, love, love this Tim Holtz paper. It's so much fun and tickets and the flowers. Um, more ephemera. This is another one of those flip pages with another card. It says simple things and it's got those beautiful roses on it. That's from the paper pack. Again, avocado dyed paper. You can pull it out. You can journal on all sorts of sides with that and in the back again this is another piece of ephemera from the card pack and this is another one of these coin bags that I printed out and from Pinterest last one this is another bead dangle it's just a little small one because it's the last one I wanted something small here so that it when you close the book and it's laying down, it's not a big deal. But you can see tons of sewing. You can see all my strings, all my strings everywhere. Um, I left them long. So, it, you know, if I choose to give this away, and I'll explain what, later why, I probably won't. Um, a flip out there in the tissue paper. I love that sound. More ephemera. This is another one of those postcards I got from Pinterest. More French ephemera. And that's all genuine antique ephemera. Uh, the la I think this is my last glassine bag. Um, another postcard out of that paper pack. More ephemera, another pocket with more ephemera in it. 
And this is the last uh, page of the um, collages that I did in here. And this is the last picture, and it strikes me that this is an older couple walking off into the sunset. Leftover piece from the paper pack. I love doing this. I have um, cardstock that's this craft paper. And so I have a punch that I punch the corners and age it up. This says, beautiful young people are accidents of nature, but beautiful old people are works of art. Um, a doily that I coffee dyed and some of my flowers. And that is the end of the book. And it again, it just ties, but you can see that this thing is bursting and I have decided I'm done. I'm not going to add any more to it. But I did want to share two lessons that I, I learned through making this book. The first one was the issue I had with doing this um, raised decorative part was that the hardboard that I was using is very smooth. And so as I started to work on this and use glue and, and put the fabric over it, a lot of the pieces started to fall off. And I realized that you know, it was just too smooth of a surface, and so stuff wasn't sticking to it, and I learned that next time I need to rough up the surface. And that reminds me that when life goes smoothly and life is just going along well, our lessons don't tend to stick as well as when life is a little bit roughed up. And so, to me, that was a great lesson to remember that I need to rough up my smooth surfaces so that things will stick. The other lesson I learned is that we see flaws where other people see beauty. Um, I'm sure you thought, wow, this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous, beautiful journal. Um, when I finished the cover, I was not happy with it, I have to say. So this highlighting that's around this is caused because I had to use so much glue to glue the fabric on around it because pieces kept falling off and I kept having to stop and glue pieces back on and I hated this highlight in the beginning because I thought, oh, it is, it's not what I wanted. Um, and again, it's just because there's so much glue under this fabric that it created a smooth part that then when I did the dry brushing over the top of it, it made that wider. The other thing, and you probably didn't even notice this, I don't know what happened here. This is supposed to match right down into the spine like this, and it didn't. I'm showing you my flaws. So when I look at this journal, this is what I see. I see that I messed up my binding here, and I see that I messed this up, and I know that when I look in the mirror, I see all my flaws instead of the things that make me beautiful. And so today I want to encourage you to see yourself as other people see you to not see all your little flaws, that there's little parts that have been broken off in here. As a matter of fact, up here, this top part was broken off. So I shoved some fabric in there to finish making that little part. And there's little pieces that are broken off in here. If you look very carefully, they're just gone. And my, my binding is wrong, um, which is why I probably would never give this book away because to me, it is so utterly flawed. And yet, you probably looked at it and thought it was a very beautiful journal. So the next time you look in the mirror, look for your beauty instead of your flaws. With that, I hope I have encouraged you to be creative today in some way. Have a great day. Bye.